Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I would like to go over a couple of things. My philosophy when it comes to at-will employment and non-competes, what obligations you have to your ex-employer when it comes to having a non-compete or not having a non-compete but just going to work for somebody else in an at-will employment environment, and two billionaire cunts going at it in a way that is very, very humorous. This here is a letter that has been sent to Mark Zuckerberg, the chairman and chief executive officer of Facebook Meta Platforms. This comes from Twitter. Dear Mr. Zuckerberg, I write on behalf of X Corp as successor in interest to Twitter. Based on recent reports regarding your recently launched Threads app, Twitter has serious concerns that Meta Platforms has engaged in systemic, willful, and unlawful misappropriation of Twitter's trade secrets and other intellectual property. Over the past year, Meta has hired dozens of former Twitter employees. Twitter knows that these employees previously worked at Twitter and that these employees had and continue to have access to Twitter's trade secrets and other highly confidential information, that these employees owe ongoing obligations to Twitter, and that many of these employees have improperly retained Twitter documents and electronic devices. With that knowledge, Meta deliberately assigned these employees to develop, in a matter of months, Meta's copycat threads app with the specific intent that they use Twitter's trade secrets and other intellectual property in order to accelerate the development of Meta's competing app in violation of both state and federal law. The letter continues to go on in a salty fashion over it not wanting them to do this, them retaining any information relevant to this dispute, not scraping the website, and so on and so forth. Let's dig into this a little bit. So first things first, ongoing obligations to Twitter. What obligations do you have when your employer fires you and then laughs about it and jokes about it on social media to tens of millions of people? In my opinion, none. You have absolutely no obligation to your ex-employer when he not only fires you in an at-will employment environment, gives you the finger on social media, and then tells you to get out. If you say sarcastically, their immense talent will have no doubt be of great use elsewhere, and they actually go elsewhere and find a job, they're allowed to do that. When it comes to the way lots of non-competes work and the way they're, they're worded, a lot of people un- misunderstand this. Non-competes are such that if you're making $100,000, and you're working at a job that's happy to have you, and I come along and offer you $200,000, I can't steal you away by offering you more money. That's the way non-competes are usually worded. They're not worded in a way where if your employer fires you, laughs about it on a public social media platform, that you're not allowed to go get another job. That's usually not the way these are worded. Secondly, many of these employees are in the state of California, California has very strict regulation regarding the wording of non-competes and often strikes them down in courts. I don't even know if these employees have signed non-competes. We don't even have that information yet. We don't even know which employees they're referring to here because as Andy Stone, Facebook's communication director said, quote, no one on the Threads engineering team is a former Twitter employee. That's just not a thing, he said. I'm going to go a little bit further with this. I personally don't even believe in the concept of having these types of non-competes to begin with. I've hired people away from other companies that treat their employees like trash, and I think that this is very important to a capitalistic system. If there's an employee that is making $17 an hour, and he does not get vacation time off to spend with his wife and newly born daughter, and I offer him $28 an hour, and I say, here, take unlimited vacation time off as long as the company is able to work to spend time with your wife and newly born daughter, he is then going to come over to work for my company. I have the right to fire that person at any given time. I can fire him for any reason, and I agree with that. You have no right to my money anymore if I don't want to give you my money. I believe in that. At the same time, I have no right to enslave you by saying that you must work for me, and if you stop working for me because I have forcibly fired you and made fun of you in front of the entire fucking world in the most sarcastic and dickheaded manner that you are not allowed to feed your family by finding another company to work for and provide value to them. This also allows wages to be higher, because if you're providing excellent value to your company but you're not properly being compensated for it, I can see that you provide excellent value to your company. I can ask, well, hmm, damn, I could use somebody that has your skills. What do you get paid? You get paid seven bucks an hour? I'll give you 30. And then they come over to work over here. That's how this works in a capitalistic system. When I'm able to see that you are not being appreciated by your current boss or employer, and I see to myself, damn, I would bring in an additional $2,000 a day if you worked here, and you make seven bucks an hour at your current employer, I'll give you 300 bucks a day. This is what makes capitalism work. 
This is what keeps wages high. My ability to see that your employer is treating you like garbage while you're bringing them a lot of money gives me an opportunity, because not because I am altruistic, not because I am kind, but because I am greedy and I want you to make that money for me to give you a raise based on your value that you offer to the company. This is how this works in a capitalistic system. I have no problem with at-will employment. I do take serious offense when employers believe that they have power and dominion over their employees' lives especially after they fire them. Again, it is one thing to say, you work here. While you work here, I have control over whether or not you take jobs outside of work. I'm not saying I agree with this. I greatly disagree with this. But to say that after you fire them, are you fucking kidding me? How not self-aware do you have to be? How much of a cunt do you have to be to fire people, laugh at them, say that they're useless and probably will never be of value to somebody else, and then actually try to sue the company that realizes, you know what, maybe these people were valuable after all. Maybe you're a fucking moron, and maybe we could actually take these people that you have fired, take the skills that they have, and use it to build something better. I think the part of this that is the most offensive to me is this whole concept of fuck around and find out. When you fire three quarters of a company after purchasing that company and denigrating their employees and laughing at them publicly, you're fucking around. When you say that, I have no doubt that they will be useful to people elsewhere, you're fucking around. When those employees go to work for your competitor that is way better capitalized than you and has the ability to beat you into the ground, you're finding out. I have no problem with people who fuck around. Fuck around as much as you want. Don't cry like a bitch and write these stupid, pathetic legal letters when you start to find out. That's capitalism. I hate this type of anti-competitive shit. If I want one of my employees to not do work for his own company, I need to pay him enough that he does not feel like when he's off the clock that he has to do work for his own company. If I want my employee to not go off and work somewhere else, I have to pay him enough. I have to come up with a framework that keeps him here, that keeps him where I want him to be, that keeps him engaged. I can't just tell people, oh yeah, by the way, you get $30 an hour, you don't go to work for anybody else ever, and if I fire you, fuck it, you better damn go sleep by a sewer grate and starve to death because no way in hell I'm going to allow you to make money elsewhere. I just think this entire thing is bullshit. Uh, the best part of this entire thing is the whole idea of them having ongoing obligations and keeping Twitter documents and hardware without returning. Like, there, there isn't even any evidence for this. There's no evidence for any of this. He's just pulling shit out of his ass without evidence, just trying to throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. And the most fun part of this, Twitter lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Every year, 50 to 100 million dollars. Sometimes they lost a billion dollars a year. Before. Meta prints money. They make lots and lots of money. Who do you think is going to win in a lawsuit, especially if they're being challenged in a very bogus way? This is something that I've going through very recently. I went to one of the best Lebanese restaurants in the entire world the other day near the store, and I had a conversation with somebody who's worked here for over five years. He talked about where he wants to be in life. I talked about where, where my business is and where I see myself going, and I asked him, just point blank, honestly, how can I help build a bridge from where you are here to where you want to be in life? Just, like, I want the best for them. And that's the way that I think it should be if you're a good business owner. You should be happy that your employees that are not able to work for you anymore are able to be happy working somewhere else, even if it's building somebody else's success. And if that doesn't make you happy, then you need to pay them enough money and you need to create the lifestyle for them, whether that is relocating to where they want to be located or paying them enough money that they don't care to the point where they will stick with you. I've always felt that way as a business owner. It's on me to come up with a framework to make my employees happy if I want them to stay. And if they don't want to stay, then the only answer for me has always been, how can I build a bridge from where you are now to where you want to be? How can I make it as easy for you and as best for you as possible? I'm not offended. Like if somebody is able to offer one of my employees double their salary, I would tell them to take it. Like who am I to say you shouldn't take that? Would you not take that offer? If somebody came up to you after you got fired from your job and your boss made fun of you on a large social media platform and said, I will give you $200,000 a year to use your skill set to help me build my brand and build my software, build my hardware, build my business, would you not say yes to that? Or would you say, no, I'm going to lie here and sit in the gutter and starve to death, not getting a job anywhere because my boss said I'm not allowed to go work for you? Fuck that. Who do these people think they are? Like You have absolutely no loyalty to a man that lets you go and fires you. You should go on and work somewhere else. You should go on and make your own money. You should work for their competitor if they hire you. I had to let go people 
from my New York store when I left to go to Texas. Some of those people are right now working for another person who took over my old space, and I wish them luck. I promote Paul's YouTube channel on my own community page and sometimes in the end of some of my videos when people ask about Paul. I want his business to do well. I could not continue to employ him. I had to go. He wasn't able to follow me across the country. Am I going to say I don't want Paul to work at another repair shop if he goes to a U-Break iFix or a CPR or to a different MacBook repair place? Do I not want to see him do well? I want to see him do well. Not only do I want to see him do well, either working for somebody else or working for himself, I want him to make more money working for somebody else than he could have ever made working for me. Because that means he's happy. And if he's happy, then I'm happy. That's the way it's supposed to be. And if I fire somebody because I believe they are useless, and then they go to work somewhere else, and they make more money working for somebody else than they were able to make working for me, you know what I say to that? Good on you, man. Good on you. You proved me wrong. I'm okay with being wrong. Being a business owner means you're going to make a lot of coin flips in life, and a lot of those coin flips are going to be incorrect. At the end of the day, we can plan until we're blue in the face. We could write down all the numbers. We can analyze the market and imagine how things will go. At the end of the day, most of it is a coin flip, and sometimes we are very, very wrong. And when we are wrong in a direction that is beneficial to the people that helped us get to where we are, the only right thing to say at that point, good on you, man. Good on you. You showed me. I have a lot of changes I'm going to have to make in my own company over the next three to six months. And as I make these changes, as I make these shifts, I'm going to be having conversations with each person that that shift has to happen with. How can I help you build a bridge from where you are now to where you want to be? Let's discuss it. You've helped me. You've helped me get a long way. And I'm, it's not my right to keep you here longer than you need to be kept here. And if somebody else is willing to pay you double what I can afford to pay you, shake your hands wish you good luck on the rest of your journey. One of those people that I fired, his name is Sonny. He's a good friend of mine. I met him in 2011. I hired him in 2013. He spent half the day pissing off my receptionist who's actually now the manager's wife and watching YouTube videos. I let him go after a few months. You know what he did? He opened his own store. His own store, 4.8 stars, over 200 views, been in business 10 years now, does very well for itself. He showed me. He proved me wrong. I fired somebody who had a good business mind. On Google, he's 0.1 star away from me. And on Yelp, he has more stars than me. Good on him, man. Good on him. Good on everybody that proves us wrong. We should be happy as business owners when our ex-employees prove us wrong. And we say, because again, when you're firing somebody, what you're saying is not that you're a failure. What you're saying is, I don't think that you are able to do the job that I need you to do to my standard right now. And, or the economic condition is just not such that I can continue paying you. But that doesn't mean that you're a horrible person. When he makes these types of jokes, you know what the fuck he's saying. He's, he's kind of asking them to prove him wrong. And they did prove him wrong. Right now, Elon Musk is fucking around. And when his employees go to work at another company and help build their business, build their brand in a way that may potentially compete with and destroy his, he's finding out. I'm all for it. Fuck around and find out. He can't bitch when he finds out. I know what I'm going to see in some of the comments. Lewis, you know, you can't just have people that quit your company after you make fun of them and laugh at them and fire them, go to work for somebody else. That's being a bad business owner. What have you accomplished, Lewis? Look at all the things that Elon Musk accomplished. He's a hundred billionaire. What are you, Lewis? You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe I have to be an ass-licking cunt like him to be able to become rich and massively successful. You know what? Maybe you're right. I'd still rather be me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.